Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you so, so much for joining me. Now today we are looking at some things that I have been tagged in and messaged in or added from all around the internet. So if you want to tag me in anything, you can find me on TikTok, Instagram, follow me, at me. Yeah, let's just dive straight in. Consider subscribing, give this video a thumbs up too. This is how to contour based on science. I'm Dr. Charles, I help keep you healthy and beautiful. And I think about makeup and contouring and shading all day long when I do cosmetic procedures because makeup, cosmetics, and skincare go hand in hand. All right, for more feminine contouring technique, we go from the lateral canthus here all the way down to the corner of the mouth. And then from the ala all the way over to the tragus. Keep that in mind. Plan one is different. We go from the pupil down to the corner of the mouth. And then we connect the tragus that and then the maximal prominent point is actually about two-thirds there so different these intersections are the point of maximal projection so the deepest shadowing or most prominent contouring should be just below them I'll show you what I mean all right let's paint the base all right remember our lines so here 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 for more feminine so the so the crescent goes there then for the more masculine one we go from the pupil down connect them and it's actually right there so it's higher and more medial Let's blend. All right, you see the difference? For a more feminine cheekbone. Ooh, I do like that. And here, more masculine cheekbone. And I think about this all day long when I'm doing cosmetics on my patients and what they want. Do you see that? So easy. And the beauty of this technique is that you can do it on your face, on anyone, and find the perfect spot to contour and shade. Next up, we have more signs of beauty, including highlighter blush, as well as more dermatology hacks and general health and wellness. I'll see you soon. So uh, yes, they absolutely all do, do go in hand in hand and, and contouring in terms of makeup is altering your bone structure to appear differently. A contour is the shadow of bone structure, right? In makeup. And what we do with contour is we either accentuate our already existing bone structure, if you are a fan of it, or we alter our bone structure to give a different appearance. If the thing is with contouring and makeup is you have to bear in mind if you are doing other makeup, you then have to add blush, you then have to have everything else. And when we have filler and things like that, for example, my filler in my cheeks, looking at this side, I have filler in my cheek here, right? And usually when I'm not wearing makeup, there isn't much of a shadow underneath it when I'm facing light directly, because that's how shadow is made. A light comes in a certain way. When we're using contour, that light, that contour, that depth is permanent because we're adding a product with, with color there. So when you're applying, so for example, the masculine side, right? If you apply your contour there, I personally wouldn't do that on me because it will push my face back a little bit. And on the feminine one, it's always, it's always the contour is always, I don't know how to describe it. I'm sure it's great in this aesthetics and sort of filler and, and things like that but when it comes to makeup I wouldn't recommend doing it that way if you are going to do more makeup it doesn't really interwind with your with other makeup products especially if you're just doing a base a foundation and then just doing contour perhaps and highlight but what that didn't really account for in terms of makeup is um for example some people may have fuller cheeks here or fuller cheeks here and then what if you're darkening here are you evening out the structure of the cheek are you making this protrude more than this, it doesn't really account for that. And although, yes, you may be drawing those lines so it will be um, personalized to that person's face depending on the structure of their face, Again, makeup helps you to even things out temporarily, give the appearance of structure temporarily, different structure temporarily. It, it just doesn't fit in, it just doesn't quite work. Um, it wouldn't quite work for everyone, that's what I'm gonna say. What's going on? What? What? 
would, would you try this technique? What is the technique though? <laughs> What's the technique? For what? The technique for what? <laughs> I don't understand. Would you try this technique? Would I wrap my lips up in? No, I wouldn't. If somebody could tell me what they were trying to achieve, that would be great. Here's a tactic you're sleeping on with bronzer under the eyes. We're obsessed with like taking concealer and completely widening out under our eyes to like brighten it. But I'm telling you, go darker. You know how I use this color to balance my under eye. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually look at the under eye. And we can see we have some darkness here. I have some like, this is like a patch of eczema right now. So it's just kind of red, purpley. I also have this area here that's like much brighter than other areas. If I turn this way, I have this area next to this dark area. My upper lid too is looking a little bit droopy. It's so important when you're looking at under eyes that you look at the whole picture instead of just like this spot. This is a neutral red. It's like a bronzer color, bright brush. And I'm going to use this right here in this bright spot next to that area that like had the kind of patchy eczema. And I'm adding color under my eye. Now you have to be like super specific about where you put this. And I'm constantly like moving my head, some color there. I'm gonna use this on my upper lid as well. Let's blend it, it's okay. It's all about balancing. So I'm looking where I need to add more color. And I told you this was kind of like an under eye tutorial, but you really have to balance your whole face. And that's the whole point of this method. It's important that you add color first before you start using color science and filtering with opposite colors on the color wheel. I'm now going to take 03 again with the bright brush and hitting the blue, just that darkest blue point about under eyes too is that it can have a connect the dots effect so kind of like anything in this orbital bone region or your tear trough can make the under eye look distracting now i'm just using this yellow orange this under eye looks again it's not like completely void of color but everything just looks a lot more try out this method make sure that you like take a picture or like look in your camera, make sure to move your head while you're doing your makeup and then have a mirror so you can see close up as well. But you're gonna be blown away. Again, no texture, no creasing. It's, just, it's better. It's a better way to under eye. Interesting. I, I get like the idea for color correction, of course, but I'm not sure what the first color was meant to do. It didn't really do anything. You could have actually just gone on with the yet a lot of a lot of the pigmentation, apart from this little dot here, was redness, right? So then they go in with the yellow to correct that redness, which yellow does correct just as much as green. People sleep on that, but it's a thing. That darker color didn't didn't really do anything. And there is a method where if you do have, like if you want to brighten your under eyes, you can go underneath the eye with a deeper skin tone than yours. And I'm talking one or two, not a bronzer, not a red or anything like that. And then go on top with something lighter. You're neutralizing and then brightening. I want to add to this as well. Sorry, just realize as I'm editing, going around and doing like dots on the face is very, it looks like a very good, precise way to be color correcting and, and doing your makeup, but it's not the longest lasting, especially those for oily, with oily skin, sorry, but also of any type. You wipe your face once, it's coming off. A bit of oil comes through, that particular position is coming off. It's not the best way to do your makeup. Even makeup artists who in professional settings do no makeup makeup, they are using a lot more makeup than you think most time consuming. So here's the deal, right? People tag me a lot in this Demi Color brand thing. If you didn't know, it's part of a multi-level marketing company. Um, and a lot of the time you'll go onto their profiles and it's like, let me match you for free. It's basically like a pyramid scheme. <laughs> I'll comment on a video the other day. Never in my life have I understood how contradictory women are when it comes to them trying to fight the patriarchy and fighting objectification, yet at the same time they use makeup, which is a product of sexist patriarchal misogyny that inherently has the message that women do not look good enough naturally and instead need to enhance how they look by clown makeup. So I decided to do some research on the origins of makeup because you know, sometimes it's better to educate yourself before 
before you speak. And it turns out that the earliest origins of cosmetics actually dates back to ancient Egypt, where makeup was mostly worn by men to enhance the look of their masculinity and to evoke the gods to ward off illness. I don't know where in history this all got twisted, but so many men have such a hard time understanding that not everything women do is for the male gaze. So Chad, if you want to weaponize cosmetics as a way to tell women that you think they're not good enough, maybe look into the fact that it's your gender that created this product for themselves because it's men who first wanted to enhance how they felt. Which, by the way, regardless of whether you're a man, woman, or gender fluid is not a crime. And to be honest, these days there are so many men who do their makeup better than me. And guess what, Chad? Those men probably love themselves a lot more than you love yourself because they've realized that perfecting their winged eyeliner is a much better use of their time than trolling a woman putting on makeup. Yeah, love it. Listen, so, one second. Anyone who is interested in the history of makeup needs this book. This is Pretty Boys, um, and this is by David Yee. He is the founder of Good Light, and it's all about men in makeup. Men in makeup goes back further than ancient Egypt. It starts in 550,000 BC. BCE. God, I don't even know what it is. We're talking like Neanderthal times. It goes back a really long way. Men stopped wearing makeup more as a protest. Here's the deal, right? When I first started in makeup, when I was 17 years old, I was working on models of all genders, customers of all genders, clients of all genders. My colleagues, the people who taught me, were all genders. It was, has never been a cut and dry men and women thing for me, even growing up. If I had a blemish in school, my mum would help me conceal it. Like, it's just, it's just, uh, you know, a thing. And it's another thing. I get, sometimes I get comments on my videos like, oh, it's so, um, um, such a misogynist talk, telling women how to do their makeup. I'm telling everyone how to do their makeup. <laughs> I don't think makeup is just for women. And here's where people need to get a grip. Makeup isn't how it used to be. Yes, there are some awkward points off makeup and some, some parts that aren't so great. However, people use makeup nowadays, and it's been like this for many, many, many years now, as an artistic expression, a form of expression, a form of self-care, a moment to themselves mentally, not just physically. Makeup has been, for me, as somebody who is a lover of makeup, not just like buying things, but the, you know, the history of it, the process of it, um, the technique, the, the theory behind it. It has always been a science. It's always been a coping mechanism, an artistic expression. It's always been something you can educate people on. People need, need to get over this thing. Men, let's say, men need to get over this thing where they're like, oh, I don't like women who wear makeup. Give a fuck. Maybe they don't like men who don't. You know what I mean? Makeup is so much more than something that is just for looks and for vanity. <laughs> you know how I feel about when makeup has no rules saying and she is displaying there how yes you can be creative with makeup but there are some things you have to do in makeup to make it look you know a certain way okay I think I've spoken a lot and done a lot thank you so much for joining me find me on Instagram TikTok tag me in things don't tag me in your hate comments though please don't be like your makeup sucking shit at Robert Welsh would say so too I wouldn't thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you very very soon bye